Oh, I'm going to start looking at this thing. This Adventist R6581T digital model meter. This is definitely faulty. It's got some issues, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want always to buy bits of test gear which are broken so we can fix them on the channel. If you saw the mailbag video, hopefully you saw the mailbag video. If you didn't, check out the mailbag videos. The display on this is a little bit dim. So when I actually go to work on this thing, I'm going to turn some of these lights off, otherwise you won't be able to see the display at all. Um, I've got the power ready here, ready to go. Or I'll just push the power button, it will come on. But it's got some issues going on. So I want to quickly look at some of these things, because it could be quite easy fixes, in theory. I'll tell you what these problems are anyway as we go through. So make sure you stick around and we'll see what's going on. So like I said, the first thing is the display is really dim. Another problem is these buttons. They're a little bit intermittent. You can push them and nothing actually happens. And you have to sort of wiggle them around and... and push them out all times and eventually it will go. So I think all these buttons need cleaning. Uh, I'm not quite sure what year this thing is. I mean they've been around for a while now, probably 20 years I suppose, but I don't know exactly. I'll have to see if there's any date codes inside. I kind of got these ones working before, these ones, last night when I was doing the mailbag video. I got to the point where I'd push it and it worked. But I've tried it again just now and it's doing the same kind of intermittent problems. So I think there must be some issues with these buttons. I just need a bit of cleaning up. I don't think that's going to be a too good deal. I think these buttons might just be monetary switches, I'm not quite sure. It might not be much of a problem at all. And the other problem is it looks like it's got potentially just a flat battery, which is what I want to prove or disprove right now. So let's turn some lights off so you can see the display. It's going to get dark. Yeah, turn this on. Just see this light, turn some more lights off. So you can see it's pulling about 30 watts out. And display is working. When I did the mailbag originally, I thought we didn't have a display because I couldn't see it because all the lighting was basically draining out. I just couldn't see the thing was even near. It does have a display, it's just not very bright. If you know where I can get a replacement display for this thing, let me know. There's a guy on EV blog which is mentioned in a, in a thread for one of these meters. There's a big repair thread on this, oh, that's 23 pages and all that. I think it's ridiculous. I sent him a message, but I haven't had a reply yet, so I'm hoping he's still got displays. I don't know if he has, but if you know of a place where I can get a display for one of these, which is in good condition, let me know. Because if I can't solve this soon then I'll obviously be looking for one of these long term. Let's actually start playing with this thing. So if I do say two wire, I just switch over at a time, it's doing slightly better. DC volts. DC volts, come on. There we go, we went. Now if I do auto ranging, yeah sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It shows overload and another thing it does sometimes is it all just basically your nuts, the relays will just trip all the time. This saying overload, even though there is no overload. Is it an auto or not? I can't see. Auto zero. There you go, auto mode. Come on. There we go, auto mode. Just come up. So got a PDV is too many over here. Let's try winding this up. 100 millivolts, that's showing up just fine. 200, there we go. Hear that clicking? It's trying to auto range and it can't do it. So that's the other problem I need to look at. But I think it's probably just a bad battery. What I'm going to try doing is doing an internal calibration on this. You can do like an auto internal self calibration, which may solve the problem if it's because of the battery. Common problem with these apparently is the battery can be a problem. So when a battery goes flat, it actually that can be one of the symptoms it has. If I just get the menu to come up, there we go. <laughs> um, calibration, enter. Come on. Internal calibration. Uh, yeah, it's the all. To be a bit of button, so I've got to sort this out. There we go, internal cow. This will take a little while, so let's just leave it to it. So I've just finished doing the voltage calibration, now it's doing the resistance ranges, and now it's doing the current ranges. So it's just a 100 milliamp, now it's doing 1000 milliamp range. It's getting there. So it looks like it switches between resistance and current ranges as it's doing this. 
seem to anyway, unless I was misreading it before. Like I said, the display is not very good, you can barely see what it says. Yeah, see, they're saying milliamps or nanoamps now. Maybe. And there's there's resistance again. So yeah, it's switching between current and resistance ranges during the calibration. Interesting. Alright, so that's done that job. Let's now exit this. Uh, exit is over here. Exit. Exit. There we go. Exited. Let's try putting some voltage in again. So 100 millivolts. Oh, look at that. Should be around a lot though. That's interesting. Okay, 200. Oh, didn't do that before. 300. Look at this. Okay, 1 volt. Okay, that's actually working. Brilliant. So it does look like the problem there is just battery. 2 volts. Yep. 10 volts. Yep. Okay, I couldn't get this to happen before. So, I think the 10 volts actually worked, but nothing else did. The uh, 1 volt range didn't work. 100 millivolts was a bit dodgy. So, yeah, that's good. That's pre that basically proves that, that issue with it clicking and going crazy and being over range is just that battery's gone flat and it's lost the internal cow. It doesn't store it. Okay, that's good. So at least I know what that story is. So let's try going manually through the ranges. If I can get it to work. Come on. Come on, there we go. So that's the 1 volt range, 10 volt range, 100 volt range. Before these are showing as overload, 1000 volt range, yep, excellent, all good. Got this config button here, what's this do? Seemingly nothing. Oh, there we go, configuration. Ooh. I think I'm going to fiddle with that until I can actually get the buttons working properly. So yeah, progress. So let's pull this thing apart and actually have a look inside this thing. Now we've got some idea of what's going on. It still has these factory seals in it. Well, not factory seals, but these calibration seals from Simco. I'm not sure who, who they are, but it's still sealed. It's a shame to break into them, but I'm going to have to just to try and fix the thing. So we'll break into it. So it's got an internal fan here, which is really quiet, I can barely even hear it, it's really good. Um, so what we've got going on here, optically connected connection on the back here, capacitor there looks alright, capacitor there looks okay, that one doesn't look bulged, that one looks alright, nothing obvious at least, that's good. Oh there it is, there's the battery, right there. Okay. And i also got to figure out how to get this front panel off so I can clean our switches because they need doing. Just in case something's going on inside there, I'd rather find out but not while investigating it. Come on, come out. There we go, right. Okay, so I've got more power supply in here. Capacitors look okay, no signs of problems there, no cap here which looks alright. So there's no signs of any bulging which is always a good sign, that um, gives a bit of confidence in it. So all the relays and stuff are all in here for switching. Now there are models which have the AC board which would normally go here and this doesn't have it because there's this unpopulated socket right here. Um, the this is the T version. The T version doesn't have AC. It would have been nice if I could get one of these at original price, which had the AC option. But they're just ridiculous money. They're thousands and thousands of dollars. So I think it's like six or seven thousand dollars to get one of them. This was fifteen hundred. So not having AC, minor sacrifice, because it can do the other stuff. Okay, so that's all looking right in there. Let's put this back together, and I shall see what we can do about this battery. 
Uh, which one should we use? I think we use the, the Fluke 175 today. And let's measure this battery. What do we get? I can get onto one end of it, it's a bit tight in here. Hmm. <laughs> well, that looks like it's nothing. Um, let's try and jam it in there. Try and get a different, different connection, I'm not sure I have. So I stick on there. Yeah, that battery's completely flat. That explains it. So I need to replace that battery and actually get us some way towards fixing it. Obviously, I've got to take this front panel off and clean our switches. That's also going to be interesting. So this is the back of the board there, and this is the battery location just here. You've got a tie strap just there, which is tying it down. I've cut the wire on the other side for the positive terminal battery. I'm going to desolder the negative side because I can't get to it to cut it over and all that. So it's got like a post that attached to the battery, which is then going straight down. So I'm going to desolder it from here. So you've got to take this shield off the bottom here. It's got this plastic shield over it, which is a few screws, which might even make the whole ball fall out. I might actually just tip it on its back, actually, and um, do it that way. Can I hold this up enough for that? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do the job. Excellent. We'll jam that in there. So I'll, I'll desolder this one. I've already cut this tie strap, so it should pull through. There's one way, but maybe not all the way. Desolder that one. So here's the battery. Looks a lot like one that's actually in it. Let's have a look. Uh, it's not quite the same, but it's, it looks very similar. It's not the same one, but. Well, because it's got these wires on, I'm actually really tempted to remotely mount it and just like cable tie it somewhere out of the way rather than having this directly on the circuit board. Because if you get a battery which does leak and fail, it ends up going on the board. But if I mount this somewhere else, then it could actually potentially save it. I mean, this would last a decade anyway, but if I can put it somewhere else, why don't I? All right, let's do solder this thing. Should literally fall out. Yeah, just like that. That was easy. Right, so I'll shut the wires to the battery. I'm just going to solder the negative just to like pre-tin it. I'll shove it through the hole which I've cleared. And then what I can actually do is I can cable tie it up here. There's like a mesh just up there. Um, I can cable tie it through that and that'll just tie it really close to the circuit board but away from it. So if this battery ever failed and leaked it wouldn't ruin the circuit board. It'd just be on the chassis and that's not going to matter. Right, so I've got the wire poked through. Now I've got to try and solder this. I might actually take that wire off because there's the leg which I actually cut off the positive side. So I'm actually thinking what I might do there is um, because I cut it off, I think I'll desolder that as well and then I'll put the wire through. Just be a bit tidier. Right, poke, poke that wire through. Just attach it. Okay, that should be good. So here's what I was saying about the battery sitting here with this mesh. You can see the mesh just there, and there's the wires to the battery. So I've definitely got the ability there to just cable tie it to the side there, just like that. And that's just tucked nicely out of the way. You won't cause any harm if something happens. So there you go, there's the battery in place just there. It's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's not perfect. It will tip around, but it won't actually slide. So I don't think it's going to fall out. Um, I also have to be careful of these because these are the optic cables which come through so to kind of guide it around there and I was trying not to block these vents so I've got it off to one side as much as I can because obviously there is meant to be ventilation coming through here so I didn't want to block it up too much by having a battery completely filling it so that's done next let's do the front panel <laughs> 